Hi, my name is Ken. This is Ed. Today I'm going to be talking about the Yi Chi Kim and Mas stance, or the Wing Chun neutral stance. The basic idea behind this stance is to help you create a higher level of awareness of how to control your center. And like any good Wing Chun man will tell you, your Wing Chun will only be as good as your center is. So I'm going to talk about what the idea of your center is real quick. Basically, everybody's controlling their center when they're walking around. When you walk from point A to point B, you're controlling your center. You're standing upright. You're not falling down. You're not wobbling back and forth as you're doing it. You're going from point A to point B, standing upright, holding your body in a rather neutral position. Now, how does somebody have a better center than someone else? Well, basically, everybody's had an instant point in their life when they've walked around and maybe they're walking around and they've bounced off somebody, get knocked over, or vice versa. They're walking around, somebody bumps into them, and they get, and that other person gets knocked over. Well, the person who got knocked over, in an instance, did not have the better center. So basically, what Wing Chun is trying to do is give you the structural advantage or proper body position while giving you a good balance of mobility behind that structure. So what I'm going to do today, my partner Ed is going to go through the steps of getting into the Wing Chun stance, and I'm going to describe the mechanics or body positions that we use, and some of the things you want to try to feel for inside while you're doing the stance. So I'm going to just have Ed stand right here. The first thing he's going to do is stand upright and have the heels slightly touch. Now, this is very important from the very beginning here. You don't want to slouch. You can think about your spinal column as a spider's web. Well, to have the proper tension on the web so that the spider can feel when somebody is touching the web, you need to have tension on both sides. Both sides being the head and the hips. I'll get to the hips in a little bit, but right now I want to talk about the head. Basically, actually, could you just stand at a side view for a second? Basically, when you stand, you want to stand with good pro proper uh, body structure, or just stand straight up, just think like you're in the military, and the idea is to stretch the head properly. Now, notice here, Ed's head is stretched straight in the proper position. If you roll his head forward this way, that's not going to properly stretch the top of the spine. What you actually want to do is from here, just think about if somebody's pulling up right at the back of the head here. Notice the fine-tune adjustment he made. That's going to all you need to do to stretch the top of the head. All right, let's go back to facing the camera. I'm going to get to stretching the hips in, uh, in a second. So basically, remember, you want to stand with good posture, even from the very beginning here. And remember, everything we do in Wing Chun has purpose behind it. So, the opening part of the uh, Nichi Kinama stance, he's going to go from here and cross his hands left over right. Now, a lot of people ask, why do we cross our hands left over right? What's the purpose behind it? Well, there's a couple reasons why we do this. One reason is because a lot of times in society, especially as you get to become an adult, a lot of people become top-heavy breathers. They breathe from the upper portions of the lung. And what you want to do is create a lower center of gravity. So to do that, you actually need to start breathing using your diaphragm and your abdominals, just like you did when you were a baby. You didn't know better because that's natural body breathing. Remember, everything we do in Wing Chun is based on natural body mechanics or natural for the body to do. So what we're doing here is what we call actually closing the chest. If you do it properly, while he's standing here, as you go open for one more time, he could, if you want to, breathe top heavy. But when he closes his arms together, it actually makes it a little harder for him to breathe using the upper part of his chest. And so, the idea is to become more aware of using the abdomen and the diaphragm to breathe. So again, you have the upper part of his body becomes a little bit lower center of gravity because he's using his abdominals and diaphragm to breathe naturally. All right. The other part why we do this, left over right, is because it's believed in Chinese culture that the left, because the heart is actually a little bit on the left, that it gives a little bit more space, allowing a more natural position and more natural chi to flow. So we're going to go through that, cross his left over right, he'll roll his hands underneath, and when he pulls back, you want to be careful not to open up the chest again. That's a big mistake that people do. We've already closed the chest, hopefully become develop awareness of becoming a bottom breather or abdominal breather, not to open up the chest again. So the next part we're going to do here is bend the knees and roll the hips. The bending the knees part is important because you don't want to overbend. That will actually bring your legs too low. And again, remember I said the other balance point to this is using your proper body position with mobility. Well, if your knees are bent too far, that's actually going to cut down on the mobility that you're going to be able to need to call upon. 
So from here, you bend your knees naturally, just like when you walk, natural bend in the knee. That's all you need to do. If your knees are over your toes, you've bent your knees too far. Now the next point here, you want to roll the hips forward. Now, a big mistake that people do, and I'll do the side view while it holds the front view, is that when people are here and they roll the hips forward, they actually push the hips forward, and that actually throws their upper part of their body back. Remember, when you line up, you want the whole torso of your body to be in between the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot. So be careful not to push the hips forward, but literally roll the hips forward. Just like you're sitting on the edge of a chair or when you go sit down and anything you do. Keep your back straight and keep the hips rolled underneath. Okay, so he tucks his hips, bends his knees. The next thing he's going to do is open up his feet. Good. Now, again, be careful not to lose your balance at this point. You should always be maintaining your center, even through this position right here. Now, he's going to open up his feet into the final phase. The, the heels go out. Now, you notice here, his feet are approximately shoulder width apart. You don't want to be beyond the shoulder width. And again, the reason for that is because you want to be able to create a proper body structure or body position so that you have a slightly lower center of gravity while maintaining the possibility to have good mobility. If you go too far beyond, if he ever opens up his feet too wide like that, Sure, he may have a lower center of gravity, but that's actually going to cut down on his, his mobility. So when he goes to try to apply Wing Chun in a fighting situation, it's actually going to be harder and slower for him to move. So that's why we go with the shoulder width apart. And don't think it's got to be on the outside of the shoulder here, but approximately where the shoulder joint is, is where the foot should go down and be. So remember, even at this point here, you want to be balanced in between the heel of the foot and the ball of the foot. You don't want to be too far back. You don't want to be too far forward. So a couple things that you can do to check this is, one, use your toes. Your toes are a barometer of your balance point. If you're too far back, your toes are actually going to come off the ground. If you're too far forward, your toes are going to actually grip the ground too much. Your toes should be able to be relaxed. Now, your toes are there to help you adjust. So when we get to the moving stage, that if you are slightly off, you can use your toes to help you adjust and catch your center if you need to, just like you do when you're naturally walking around anyways. So just a couple things to remember is one, you want to be able to breathe with the abdomen. Don't breathe with the upper part of your body. Two, always keep the hips rolled forward and always keep the knees slightly bent. Three, always make sure you maintain good posture. A lot of people get very sloppy and lazy when they do their Wing Chun. And they'll go from having good posture to having some type of curved back. It's not healthy. You go ask any doctor, they'll tell you to walk around with a straight back because that's healthier for you to be. It's healthier to have good flow from the, all throughout your body and not be hunched over. All right. Well, good luck in your training, and we'll see you in the next time.